everybody, welcome to Snow Talk. This is Way 3 News Meteorologist Brian Good filling in for uh, Kevin tonight for the 11 o'clock news. In fact, I'll be filling in for Kevin through early next week as he's uh, enjoying some more time off. Uh, is going to be hanging out with some celebrities. I'm sure you guys will be hearing more about that in the coming days. All right, uh, for us, we're going to talk about the cold weather, and there is some snow to talk about. Nothing crazy snow-wise, but as uh, we always do on Snow Talk, we discuss what's out there, and is it uh, a big deal, not a big deal, and what uh, could uh, happen over the next uh, 7 to 14 days. First off, the stats, as always, our normal is uh, catching up to our actual so far this year. 3.4 now. It's almost balanced out. <laughs> It may happen here in the next day or two if we don't get any snow. And then last year continues to increase slowly, 6.1 uh, for uh, last year to date. All right, on the board, got some light snow in the morning. We'll talk about that. In fact, about six hours away from not moving in. Half a Twix bar on a scale of 0 to 10. Sunday through Wednesday, that one's capturing a lot of attention. I'll talk about that one and how that setup is going to play out. Uh, it did take off Friday, by the way, because it looks like flurries, but I just don't see any uh, potential for anything measurable on that, so I'm not even going to give it a half a Twix bar. And then the 15th to the 18th uh, will follow whatever happens early next week. All right, let's uh, break this up between the snow and the cold. Let's start with the snow first. Radar's quiet, those little blips. Yeah, it's not anything to worry about. Uh, this is actually snow, though, in Iowa and Missouri and moving into Illinois. This is tracking to the south and east. This is the digging feature, if you will, of the cold Arctic air. It's just really digging in from the north. And as it does so, it's pushing a band of energy along it as it pushes to the south. And along that band of energy is where there's enough lift to produce snow showers and snow flurries. And because it is so cold, it doesn't take much moisture to get rain out of the atmosphere and you get snowflakes flying. So this is a light snow event by all means, but it is going to arc itself in the pattern it is heading in. So that will likely take it more across Kentucky than it would across Indianapolis and Cincinnati. You guys got snow last night. Tonight, this is a much weaker system. Uh, but some light snow showers are uh, approaching the area, and uh, they do bear watching because it is cold, the ground's cold, it's going to stick no matter what falls. So here we go with the latest on our high-res model. For the overnight, you'll see it begin to break out moving from the west. By 3 o'clock in the morning, we should start seeing snow bands on the radar. The temperature is very cold at that point, uh, teens developing, in fact. Uh, and that, Right behind the band, by the way, of snow, that's where you get the really, really, really cold stuff. So the band of snow is the signal of the big change in drop. It's already cold out there, I know, but the snow is the actual signal. So when you start seeing it snow, then you know that that really cold air is just a matter of an hour or two behind it. Then, as we into the morning rush, this is the period of the watch, because the snow band should continue to drift to the south. Very, very spotty, very broken. See, it's more like banded features that will likely show up on the radar. And each one of these bands, I mean, look at this one's got a little bit of green in it. You know, some of these could come down pretty good. Uh, and I say pretty good as in maybe a half inch would be your scenario. But even a light dusting of snow at rush hour in Kentucky, and as I've said before, can cause, cause us some big headaches. headaches. So uh, we'll watch this. Make sure to watch Sunrise in the morning with Christy, and we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated. And with Chris McGill in the traffic, too, let you know if anything is indeed reaching the ground and is it causing slick spots. So the snow factor is not a major deal, but it is worth mentioning. Notice the numbers, though. As the snow begins to fade throughout the day, we'll begin to break the clouds up somewhat. But look at that. 11 o'clock, we dropped the 10. And Indiana drops closer and closer to zero. Ouch. Now, as far as snow uh, forecast goes, here's uh, one of the uh, models spitting out again. Just a very light coating, maybe a couple tenths of an inch of snow. It's not enough for an advisory criteria, but it is enough to cause accidents. So uh, we'll watch that. Now, let's talk about the cold, shall we? 25 outside, as I mentioned now, the teens off to the north. And wind chill factor at the moment already feels like one in Seymour. 10 in Austin feels like 14 here in Louisville at this hour. And that's going to be warm compared to what's coming. Let me show you the wind chills. As we head into tomorrow morning, when everybody's getting up, going to work, going to school, it should drop to about 3 here in Louisville and already 7 below in Seymour. And it gets worse. By lunch hour, we'll be below 0 in a good chunk of Kentucky, Anna, and already at 10 below, if not colder, in Seymour for a wind chill. And then it gets even colder as we head into Wednesday evening. Uh, greater than 10 below, potentially in Louisville, and about 20 below in Seymour. Now, advisory criteria, by the way, is 10 below or colder. That's why we do have alerts, as you'll see in a minute, for our northern counties for that potential. But you notice here, for Louisville and far northern Kentucky here, it's borderline. It's very close to that 10 below mark. We're not in advisory yet, but there's a chance we could get added in if these numbers become more of a reality. We may see the advisory get pushed more south. Uh, and our southern tier county is very unlikely to reach that criteria. But 
uh, if there's any more extension, it would be to include areas along the Ohio River. Otherwise, right now, the advisory stops to the north. But the most brutal wind chills will be in the afternoon, Wednesday, Wednesday evening, because by the time we head into Thursday morning for work and school again, the winds actually relax enough in most of the area that we will see the criteria level ease across Kentuckyana. The advisory is going to stay in effect for our far northern counties until at least 10 in the morning on Thursday, and for good reason, because you're likely to hold on to the winds just a few hours longer. Otherwise, the rest of us will see an improvement. So it will not feel as bad Thursday morning as it will tomorrow afternoon, but it will be actually colder, the actual temperature, if that makes any sense at all. I hope it does. All right, as far as alerts go, here's that wind chill advisory. You see it there in the uh, light blue shaded area, and that uh, purple, by the way, is wind chill warnings all to the north. they got a deep snowpack in this area from that snow last night, so this is a likely area to see wind chills way down there, close to 20 below zero, if not colder, even 30 below. I would roll that out. So that snowpack is really helping them. We don't have a snowpack, so to get this cold with that snow on the ground, I'm telling you, that's tremendous to have happen. We had it happen a year ago this week. All right, now looking long term, here's the cold air now over us. It leaves us on Thursday, only to get another shot. Comes in Friday. It'll be equally as cold, if not slightly more modified. I'm trying to determine how cold this one's going to be for Friday night. I got single digits. Don't know if we'll go below zero yet. The Canadian model really wants to take us there, but I'm not going there yet. We'll watch uh, Friday night and see how that plays out. But then we see the pattern relax. We start to get more of a flow out of the southwest. And, but still, the cold air is at play. And in fact, the cold Arctic air through the end of next week really settles in the Ohio Valley. And I do suspect we're going to see a, a decent storm develop here on the east coast during this weekend, the 16th. I think it's going to be an east coast storm. How that influences Kentucky, I don't know yet. But that's why I've got the 15th to the 16th there on the uh, the chart for uh, snow talk is I do think there's something that's going to happen in this area with this kind of a setup just don't know exactly how to look so here's the map that explains what I'm talking about and I just showed you we got the Arctic air at play Sunday Monday and Tuesday we've got warm air now because cold air is heavy doesn't move as quick warm air is going to go on top of it question is how much that cold air is going to erode away because wherever they overlap that is where we got to watch for a messy setup here for anything if the cold layer is going to be thicker, we've got more blue in our backyards here on the map, then we're going to end up with more snow. If we've got more red than anything, we end up with more rain. If we get the purple, we get freezing rain. I know a lot of us uh, don't like the word of any of that stuff, but I do think all three are potentially on the table. So it's kind of a mess here as we end early next week because we don't know who's going to win, red or blue. And no, it's not a cards versus cats thing. Here's the GFS experimental. It is not excited at all about this. This is for Sunday to Monday. It throws some moisture at us. It would be frozen, but very light. GFS is really struggling here. Here's the Canadian. It throws moisture at us, and a fairly decent amount of moisture comes throwing at us. Uh, based on these numbers, by the way, it would be uh, warmer aloft. So this would be uh, rain or sleet, or I'm sorry, freezing rain or sleet, because look at the temperatures of the ground. We're still in the 20s. The freezing line is still to the south of us. So that would be uh, something to watch. The European, it throws in moisture at us as well, Sunday and Monday. In fact, it has a couple waves thrown at us through the period. It too has a slightly warmer profile above our heads, but when you look at the ground temperatures, it actually is slightly warmer than the Canadian, only by a couple degrees above freezing, mid thirties, which would be more of a very, very cold rain. Okay, so what do I think? These scenarios, we see this a lot. This is an overrunning event. Models struggle of how quickly to get that cold air to move when the warm air flies overhead. And we end up with a lot of a mixed scenario, freezing rain and or sleet. It's this shot coming in Friday night and Saturday that is throwing things off for me when it comes to the actual numbers. Because if this shot Friday night and Saturday is a little more significant than what is showing up now and turns colder as we get toward that time frame, then that means there's gonna be much more cold air at play here for uh, Sunday into Monday, and I think the cold layer would be thick enough to be mainly a snow event rather than a mixed. Um, so there's a lot of questions we have, and as I mentioned before, we can't just answer the system yet. So right now we just have a chance for snow. I know a lot of people are saying chance of wintry mix, or rain or snow, or whatever. In truth, yes, all of them are reality, uh, possibility uh, for the setup for next week, but we're going to just keep it on the low key for right now, guys. All right, let's just let, the, let everything settle out the next few days. Let's see how this cold wave works Friday night and we'll try to nail down Sunday through Wednesday. All right, so uh, again, nothing really crazy coming our way other than the cold weather, and that is uh, crazy enough for a lot of us. We really don't like that. So be safe, check on your neighbors, your friends, and of course, on your pets. Keep your pets inside. That's a message especially brought to you by Nemo.